Hello and welcome everybody to my first impressions uh, Grim Reminders card scoring. Uh, unfortunately, I recorded uh, this video with no audio, so I have to record it again, which means that this is not gonna be a real first impressions because I've already had my first impression. So this is gonna be a kind of second expression, impression, not expression. Um, I already have my scoring. I'm just gonna try and talk through why I think what I think. Um, probably will be faster than the other episodes. I don't know. Um, in case you haven't watched the previous episodes, then um, my score ranking is between minus one and three. Minus one being a card that is actively bad that you might discard instead of play. Um, and that doesn't have enough enough upside to make up for it, something like a bad penny. Um, out zero will be a neutral card, something that you play for either an amber with little value, like a one-two punch, or like a creature that might reap later but doesn't have any immediate effect, uh, or isn't like a big threat to your opponent, something like a snuffle gator. Uh, a one would be a good solid card, like... Um, something with uh, an effect, uh, like a creature with an effect, like a look for Spectre's Logo, or um, Spot Removal, like uh, Life for a Life, with an Amber Pip. Uh, a 2 is a really strong card with an immediate effect, something like an Exhume, uh, or a Ronnie Risk Clocks. And a 3 is a very strong card that is probably a deck maker, something like Punctuated Equilibrium, Lateral Shift, or Val Jericho. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's get right to it. We have um, Elliot play after fight after reap. You may play an upgrade from your discard pile uh, on Elliot. Uh, scrap shuffle all upgrades from play into the owner's deck. Uh, I give this one uh, a one, and mostly because the scrap effect is um, uh, a tech card against upgrade. And it doesn't, it, it, it is attached to a creature that you might use, and it's not useless and against the deck with uh, no upgrades. Uh, the effect itself is pretty good, like it's a creature with an interesting effect, and but naturally that depends on if you have uh, upgrades in your deck or not. Alien Horror, um, 3 power, while haunted, Alien Horror gets plus 7 power after fight. Each of Alien Horror's neighbors captures 1. I don't like this card very much. Um, it's it's conditional, pretty big. The after a fight doesn't really work if it's not big. Um, so this is not really a card that I'm looking for in my deck. So I give it a zero. Next we have a uh, anachometer. Uh, this is an upgrade that reads after fight after reap shuffle your discard pile into your deck. Draw a card, discard X cards from the top of your deck, where X is the number of cards in your opponent's uh, discard pile. Um, yeah, so this is an upgrade, and I don't really... And if you don't have, like, a ready creature in play, it doesn't have an immediate effect. Um, the effect itself doesn't seem very strong. It's probably nice to have in uh, Grim Reminders to get yourself haunted to match your opponent if they have a lot of cards in the discard tag. Uh, but otherwise, uh, it's not um, not very good, so I'm going to give it a zero. Bad chemistry. Uh, one amber, stun each creature that shows a house with one or more of its neighbors. This seems like a little hard to set up, uh, so I, I think it's a bit pretty much equivalent to a one-two punch. It's going to stun a, a couple of creatures sometimes. More, sometimes less. It's pretty situational, but it has an ample pip, so it's a solid zero. Uh, Core Officer Palik. Uh, it's versatile, and after fight, after reap, a friendly creature captures one. I don't think the reap ability is very strong, but the fact that it's a three power versatile creature makes it a one for me just by that. Uh, Corporal, Corporal Bridger. Play after fight, after reap. You may use a non Star Alliance creature this turn. That's kind of like Officer Chan on Better, that has also has a play effect. So I'm giving this a, a 1. It's a very solid 1. I think Officer Chan is probably a 1-2. Uh, 
So, and this is like better. I don't think it's quite level two though. Um, mm, yeah. Curse of obstinacy. Treachery goes to your opponent at the end of it turns down each friendly non flank creature that shares a house with its neighbors. Um, this is pretty strong. It can permanently stun your board if you have a big board. And uh, the only reason I'm not giving this a 2 is because it doesn't work immediately and your opponent has like time to respond. Um, uh, change the arrangement of creatures and it can also be played around. Uh, uh, Essence Entangler. This creature gets minus X power, where X is the number of amber on this creature. Scrap, move one amber from a creature to another creature. Uh, the scrap effect is just something that might be a by byproduct happening when you discard the card, not something that they're really looking for. And the effect is pretty useless if your opponent doesn't have any capture, and even if they do have capture, this is very likely to just be a minus one power or minus two power, which is not terribly effective, so I'll give it this a zero. Next up, we have Event Horizon. Discard cards from the top of your deck until you discard an Archon card or run out of cards. If you discard an action card, play that card. So this kind of like a wild wormhole that definitely is going to play an action card, which is very, very cool. I do love a uh, wild wormhole and this is going to be a uh, similar um, power level for me. Um, I would say that if this was playing a creature, it would probably be uh, like a 2. Uh, right now it's a, it's a 1 because it's, you definitely have a lot more actions in the game in general that you don't want to play. Um, yeah, uh, Into the Warp. This one uh, is play each player, discard the top card of their deck, destroy each card that shares a house with that discarded card. Uh, this is kind of a weird random board clear thing. Uh, it's kind of like a crazy killing machine. I really don't like a crazy killing machine. Crazy killing machine for me is like a minus one. This one is a zero because it has potentially a much bigger effect because it kills each creature. Also, if you share a house with your opponent, you might be able to... Uh, use this more strategically, more effectively, but this is not like a board clear that I want in my deck. I want something more reliable when I'm looking for a board clear. Uh, jackpot, green, jackpot Green. After a creature reaps this card, top card of its controller's deck, if the discarded card hits Star Alliance, you gain one. Uh, so this is a two power creature with a pretty decent effect, but it's two power, no elusive, so it's very likely not to survive. However, this does work when you play it immediately and you have already Star Alliance uh, creatures ready. Um, but uh, otherwise, this would be like a minus one. That's something that I don't want to see. But it's a pretty decent level zero. I might be, you know, undervaluing it uh, without playing. I will not know. Lieutenant Halasta. After Reap, stun a creature. Scrap, stun the most enemy, most powerful enemy creature. Uh, this is a pretty boring effect, and the three power creature, that's not very good. So that's a zero. Missile Officer Miles, deploy. Play after reap, resolve the play effect of a neighboring creature's if you had just played it. Scrap, discard a card from your hand, resolve its play effect as if you had just played it. So this is a very strong scrap effect. Um, the play effect is okay, it's dependent on you having another creature in play with a play effect. Um, otherwise, it pretty much doesn't do anything. Uh, but the scrap effect is really, really powerful. Uh, if this gave, uh, you know, sloppy pips, then I would give this a 2. But since it doesn't, and your deck might not have a reliable way of discarding this, then I'm giving this a 1. Otherwise, this would be a 2. Modular Exoskeleton. This creature gets plus 4 power at the beginning of your turn. You may return Modular Exoskeleton from your discard pile to your hand. This card is boring. I don't care about giving power to my creatures like 99% of the time. Uh, this is only powerful if it happens to have an enhancement on it, and which is why I'm going to give it a 0. Next up we have a Multidimensional Rescue. Uh, return 1 card of each type, action, artifact, creature, upgrade, from your discard pile to your hand. For the remainder of the 
the turn you may play a non-star alliance card, Purge, Multidimensional Rescue. So this is like a look what I found on steroids. Uh, it doesn't have an Omega and it gives you a phase shift. So this is a solid 2. I don't th think it's quite a 3 because it purges itself. If it didn't, this would be insane. Um, near future lands, play with the top card of your deck revealed. Uh, we know this card, only play the top card of your deck as if it belongs to the active house and was in your hand. This is obviously a very, very strong card. Uh, you are playing with essentially your deck revealed, but just playing your top card of your deck every turn as an addition to the cards you're playing is just very, very strong. Necromorph, uh, 5 power destroyed. If Necromorph has a non-Star Alliance neighbor, fully heal Necromorph and destroy that neighbor instead. Uh, I give this a minus 1 because this could be actually detrimental. If you're playing this against next to a creature that you want to keep alive, your opponent might get a choice to destroy it. Uh, your opponent might even be able to shift your battlefield around. So this kills a very valuable creature. Uh, I think you might discard this sometimes, which is why I am giving it a minus one. Um, Paradox Shield, this creature gains destroy. Discard cards from the top of your deck equal to the creature's power. If you do, fully heal this creature and destroy Paradox Shield instead. This is very situational. Uh, you need to have a creature that is valuable and uh, put this on it. Uh, it. It might be used to just give yourself um, haunted but otherwise, this is quite situational and usually probably not going to do much. Uh, Pentacoder, this creature gains your uh, opponent's keys cost plus one for each house represented among friendly creatures. Um, it's a key cost increase, which is nice, but it doesn't come with an amber pip and you have to play it on your creature. Uh, I rather just have a creature that creates cost increases. I don't know if they exist in the set, but. As it is, this is not very good, so I'm giving it a zero. Perimeter Alarm. Use a friendly non-star alliance creature if you are haunted. Archive Perimeter Alarm. Uh, this is very dependent on your uh, you having a non-star alliance creature ready in play. And, and, and Archive is itself it's nice, but again, it doesn't have any enhancements. And if you have other archiving effects, you might muddy your archive, so uh, this is a zero for me, unless it has enhancements. Proton Siphon. One Amber, while you are haunted, this creature gets Splash Attack 5. Um, it's a pretty decent effect, Splash Attack 5 is pretty strong, but uh, it depends on, again on your playing on a creature, either a red creature, or that a creature survives until next turn, so I'm giving this a zero. Uh, prototype Harness, this creature gets plus 6 power and gains at the start of your turn the 1 damage of this creature. Again, not a card that I'm excited for, I don't really want to add power to my creatures, not something I'm looking for as an effect. Uh, Quartermaster Body, play after fight, after reap, if you are haunted, capture 2. This is a pretty mm -hmm. solid, capture 2 is get, get your opponents off check if they're at 7, that's a pretty solid effect. Um, and, it can, and it's repeatable. Uh, it would be nice if this would slightly stronger, but I think it's still a one. Uh, retro Technician Le. If you are haunted, Retro Technician Le enters play ready. After reap, you may play a creature from your discard to your hand. Um, this is very neat. Like if you are haunted, you probably have a creature you, in your discard pile that you want. Enters play ready, you immediately get the effect. And you get an Amber, that is a solid one. Um, uh, if it if it was uh, not dependent on Haunted, this would be like better than um, an Exhume. And that would be a 2, for sure. Uh, this is borderline 2, it, but I think I'm going to give it a 1 for now. I, I don't know how easy it is to get Haunted and stay Haunted in Grim Grimrinders yet. Next up, we have um, Seance Scanner. Enhance Ample Sloppy Sloppy Action if you're haunted. Use a friendly non Star Alliance creature. That's a very solid card. Uh, I give this a 1. Um, it doesn't have an immediate effect, but the pips are really, really nice. 
and using an out of house creature is is pretty good uh, effect on its own. Uh, next up we have Staff Sergeant Rea. Uh, Staff Sergeant Rea's neighbors may be used as if they belong to House Star Alliance. Scrap, ready and use a friendly creature. Both of those effects are very solid. If you have a creature in play, play this next to it. Uh, you can immediately use it. Um, and it is a creature. And it has a pretty useful strap effect, and it sticks. It might stick around. Three powers is decent, so I give this a one. Strength for diversity. Diversity is very important. I love diversity. Uh, enhance. Uh, capture sloppy play. Each friendly non-star alliance creature captures one amber. Uh, if this didn't have enhancements, I would give this a zero as a situational card. Uh, but given that it also has uh, two bonus icons, I give this a 1. Next up, we have Triangular Newsom. Deploy. After reap, if you are haunted, move one amber from Triangular Newsom's neighbors to your pool. Each amber. Oh, that's very neat. Um, uh, however, it does need to survive. And I don't, I haven't seen that much capture. Uh, so I'm giving this a zero, but if other houses have a lot of capture, this might be better. I don't know how much capture is in the set. Uh, so, like, you know, if Perfecto Ludo was in a house with, like, House Untamed, then it might not be as strong as it is in uh, Sorian. So I'm not exactly sure how to power this. I'm giving it a zero because that's just how it feels, uh... On its own, but um, it could be a one in the right deck or even more uh, potentially. And lastly, we have unprepared play. Choose a house, stun each creature of that house. I hate when they reprint sanctum cards in other houses. I I am very uh, protective of my sanctum cards. This is essentially blinding light, and blinding light I feel um, has uh, a one, especially in the in the world where uh, world tokens are flooding the board. Uh, that's it for today. This was uh, shorter because I went through this faster because it, this was not actually first impressions but second impressions. And thank you very much for watching and listening. If you have any different different opinions about the cards, please let me know in the comments and stick around for the next house, which is unfathomable.